Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Berber in the three-minute pool on ICC. Berber is playing e6 on move one, followed by d5, and we have a QGD. So I'll play this exchange variation, which I really, really like for white. I'm going to go e3. This allows him to go bishop f5 if he wants, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. h6 is a little weird right there. I haven't seen that move before in that exact position, I don't think. Hmm. Definitely a little strange, his treatment of this. I think I'll go bishop d3. I guess I don't mind trading the light square bishops, just based on how he's played it. This unorthodox play. Um, h6, g5 is certainly something to consider. Um, I'd like to get my knight to f5, but that's not really feasible. Should I castle kingside or queenside? I think I'm going to go kingside. If he goes queenside, more power to him. Um, maybe I'll go rook b1 here, just as a way to menace b4. And he plays castle's king side. Now I'm thinking I'll just trade and play um, b4. But his knight can get into b6, but that's okay because we have knight e5. Yeah, let's go b4. So knight b6, knight e5 is my thinking here. Maybe now knight a4. Because otherwise... Um, if I had played a4, he might play b5, and my knight gets, like, caught out of the game. So I kind of like knight a4 in these positions because you, um, you beat them to the punch. You don't, before they can play b5 and lock it up, you get knight a4 to c5 in successfully. He plays that anyways. Okay. Hmm. Well, this is consistent, so we'll do it. And if he trades, I'll take with the b pawn. Okay, that I can go knight b7, right, and then take on a5. I think that checks out. That's kind of nice because once I take on a5, c6 is vulnerable. He'll probably play knight b6 to try to stuff my uh, knight, but I have knight e5 here. If knight c4, I can take probably with this knight, huh? Yeah, let's take that way. The only thing is my, my knights are a little awkwardly placed now. Both like protecting one another but i am up two pawns maybe i'll play queen f5 next um uh, queen f5 now is not good also there's knight d2 to watch out for what about a4 a4 take b5 take on a5 eh. i think i'll just give a pawn back or at least offer to give a pawn back i don't think he'll take my knights because if he takes one of them, b5 becomes weak. Whichever knight he takes. Whichever step he takes or makes. Um, f4? Sure. This still looks awesome for me. No complaints. Um, maybe you just rook f2. Covers the second rank, so at least I have a2 under control. He's probably got to take this sooner or later. I think he'll take it next move. Yeah, and now I'm going to double up my rooks. Okay, now how to break through. Rook f6 seems like an obvious move. Don't know if I like it, though. I'm going to play h3 first. Just bide my time before doing anything else. Rook e6. Okay, I could play queen f5. Uh, I could also play rook f6 here. I think I'll go queen f5. See if I can maybe play queen g4 and queen h5. Something along those lines. Now, when I play queen g4, rook f6 is now um, possible. Yeah, this can't be good for him. I'm a little bit down on time, but otherwise my position is great king there okay queen h5 should be strong huh i could also take on e6 but i think this is even better yeah this is too much he resigned okay well, let's have a look so he transposed into the qgd and i played this exchange variation um 
with c6, usually they're trying to play an early bishop f5. So consequently, I played queen c2 here in the past just to discourage that. Um, e3 is the main line. The thing is, they can play bishop f5 here, though. Um, that would be the crucial move. And then there's this famous endgame, queen f3, bishop g6. Um, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen takes f6, g takes f6. And I think conventional theory says white's better here, but black has like a very solid position. And it's an interesting end game. I mean, black has shattered pawns, but they have the bishop pair. Um, yeah, this is an interesting... I've thought about playing this end game from time to time. Don't think I've actually actually ever played it for black. But um, instead, though, he played h6 followed by g5. It was kind of weird. I don't know if he's justified in weakening his king like that without any prompting. And then bishop f5. So he did achieve bishop f5, uh, which is nice for him. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this position. I think he's already kind of weakened himself. I think any subsequent castling on the king side will be fraught with more risk than usual. And I played rook b1, just preparing the very standard minority attack, using less pawns on the queen side to attack more pawns, trying to force a weakness in this position. Yeah, and I don't want to play b4 now because he can play bishop takes b4. Um, by the way, when you're preparing a minority attack, trying to advance b4, this is something I see that happens a lot to my students. A lot of times people will play a3 in preparation for b4. But um, if you have the choice, it's almost always better to put the rook behind the pawn in order to prepare the b4 advance. a3 is like only a move you should revert to if necessary because the thinking is once you play b4, you're likely going to want the pawn up on a4 anyways. Or you might have to have the pawn up on a4 if they play a6 in order to fully break through with b5. So... If you play a3, you might find yourself like losing a tempo eventually. And yeah, you should just stick with rook a, b1 and play b4 that way. So just a little pointer about that. So rook a, b1, he castled. Um, I swapped the bishops on d6 and then played b4. I knew this would create a weakness on c4, but um, I saw that if he jumps to b6 right away, I would have 95. I mean, in retrospect, maybe he should do this though. Um, he played a6 in the game. So what I was talking about is if I just play a4 now and then um, try to play b5, he can play b5 himself. And I found that in these situations, the knight is out of play. It just doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, maybe I could readjust and play e4 here and use the knight to protect that square. Lends further um, support to the e4 advance. But I like the solution in the game. Which I didn't come up with this. I mean, this is like a, a known concept in these lines. Like if a6 is played, you first play knight a4 into c5, and then you play a4 and b5. So that was my plan. Um, he did this. I thought he was going to take on uh, c5. And I think I mentioned I was going to take with my b-pawn. And then probably try to drop the knight in here and maybe go f4. But taking with the d-pawn also was interesting. And maybe dropping the knight into d4. I kind of like that too. Because then, like, my knight is really well placed and attacks c6 and maybe can come into f5 if I want it to. But turned out to be a moot point because he didn't even uh, take it. He tried to undermine, but I think he missed knight b7. Now I win a pawn, and c6 remains weak, too. Yeah, knight e5. Take. I'm just curious, like, what the computer will have my advantage at. Yeah, about what you'd expect. Pretty sizable advantage. And the bad part for him is he, he has a tough time even winning back a pawn because whichever knight he takes, um, the b5 pawn becomes weak, as I had mentioned. So something like this could happen. So knight e5, he brought the knight back to d7, and I just played f4. It seems like a good move. Um, He's hampered in the fact that f6 is always met by queen g6 check with utter devastation to his position, so he can't afford to do that. And now when I'm able to take with the f-pawn, I just get nice and easy play down the f-file. See the computer's agreeing with a lot of the stuff I did. Rook f2. Yeah, I like this move. He took the pawn, but very, very simple play. Oh, a4 would have been a cute move here, huh? Why is that? Well, obviously, if pawn takes a4, he hangs his rook. But if rook takes a4, what happens? Is just rook f6 good there? Probably. Yeah, rook f6, threatening the pawn, also maybe threatening e6. 
I just played h3. I thought like maybe my back rank would be a problem. And I knew I was going to invade with this rook soon, probably to f6. So I just didn't want to have to deal with any back rank issues if his queen becomes active or whatnot. So yeah, queen f5 also. I like this little maneuver. He's just really hurting here. You know, after rook f6, I think he he's pretty much busted. And he resigned because I'm crashing through on h6. So, all right, interesting game against Berber. And the Queen's Gambit declined. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.